Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I was requested for this video to show you guys how to change your LEDs out in your gadget tree water speakers. Um, you can apply this to the non-gadget tree brands as well. Now, this set of speakers here, both glasses are still blue. So, we don't need to do anything with those. So, I'm going to unplug that one. Now this one here actually has the green syndrome, okay? Now, you want to have one good speaker and then, of course, your bad one side by side. You should at least have one good one. Um, but looking down at the glass, look directly into the LED bulbs and see which ones are the brightest and which ones are the duller ones in your good one and the same goes in your bad one. Now in this one here I can tell that the blue one is almost burnt and the green one is getting there. It's still got about I'd say a little bit better than 80% left and our orange bulbs are sitting about the same and our red looks like it's okay too so it looks like we we just really need to do the blue one and I'd probably do the green one too just because it's starting to go so blue and green in this one are starting to get low the blue ones actually the lower of the two and what happens as these LEDs burn is the coloration of your liquid inside changes so they just don't look right together you know it just ugh, you know eventually they'll both look the same you know they'll have this greenish tinge or some other color to them um, now if you don't have a good speaker to do this with um, referring to this video is actually a really good idea because then you'll know what to look for by looking straight down at the glass and um, you can go accordingly with that and you should be fine. Now another way is to get yourself a pair of dead speakers if you can find a set that are you know somebody's selling off and if you've got at least one blue one or both of them are still blue but the speakers blue you know put up an ad you know try and find a set you can strip the light bars out okay now this one here we're gonna test it and it's still pre-wired so you're gonna need a battery and I, I'm using actually a 3.7 volt lipo battery here with a JST ad, uh, adapter on the end so I've got positive and negative accessible to me and then hook it up and then stare right at the bulbs. It's gonna make you see spots, but yeah, that's the way it goes. And get it so that it's focused at your eyes at the brightest point. Now this one here seems to look okay. I might have a problem with the red one, but we're gonna test that theory. I've got another glass here. I'm going to hook it up. And sure enough, it's a good one. It's still blue. So the liquid is still blue in this one with these lights, so I know these lights are good. So one way you can do this is if you have an extra light bar that you've gotten your hands on from a broken set of speakers, then you can just swap out the light bar. So you're going to need a soldering iron and some soldering paste. Um, if you're going to go with a direct light bar swap, you just need the soldering iron and some solder, and you're going to disconnect the wires off of this light bar here and then disconnect them off your other one inside your bad light and you'll pull this unit out. This unit is actually just put in with some uh, hot glue so all you need is a fine uh, flat blade screwdriver for that 
even a jeweler's screwdriver would work, but I use usually this one here, and find an edge that's um, able to get at, and just carefully pry that up and it'll pop right off. And then you can reattach it to the new speaker with some hot glue. So you'll need a hot glue gun. Once all that's attached, then you can unsolder your wires from here, solder on your new ones from your uh, bottom box, and uh, you're back in business. Now, another method is to go to your local Radio Shack or whoever in your city happens to carry LED bulbs and see if you can get the exact same intensity uh, LED bulbs. Now this one here, it's a green one. And in looking, this is actually going to be too dull. So, you're going to need a high intensity uh, clear glass green bulb. Okay, if you're going to do the green, same as going to be the yellow, the blue, and the orange. Okay, you're going to need high intensity bulbs. So this one actually won't work. But, again, if you have... Where did that come from? Green. There we go. Um, if you um, have access to one of these, um, you can just do the swap and go uh, if you don't have access to high intensity bulbs. The other option is to go on the internet. Um, there's a few places on the internet that I found that actually sell LED bulbs. And you want to get your hands on the brightest 3 millimeter bulbs because these are 3 mil. Okay? And you'll need those and then do a complete set swap. Okay? Um, to do that, of course, you're going to have to do one at a time. But you're also going to have to know which side of each LED bulb is positive and negative. To do that, you're going to need a multimeter because you've got to make sure that you get the right polarity. If you put it in the wrong direction, you fry the bulb. Okay? LED bulbs when it comes to polarity, the longest leg is always your positive line on an LED bulb, always. But you're working on a surface mount board here where everything's been shortened so you don't know which is positive and negative. Now, you know from here that this is positive on this side. So if you trace the board, you can see that this side here, these two are both positive, and the connecting side, these two are both positive. So you won't need a multimeter if you're paying attention to the board and you can follow the diagram. Okay. Otherwise, you would hook up a battery, check for polarity. Okay. Um, but this whole bottom half of the board where the wires actually connect, this is all positive for your LEDs. So that's pretty simple to uh, install. So it doesn't take much to do it. Uh, it also shows you here a little bit of diagram. Uh, yellow goes here. Green here. It actually looks orange, but it's... Yeah, it looks orange, but they call it yellow. Okay, whatever. Um, so yellow, green, blue, and red. So at least you can get the right order back in as well at the same time. Especially if you take this all apart at once, you'll be able to get them all back into the same order. Um, but if you're having to change them, again, once you're done changing the bulbs that are bad or changing all four, squash that back down facing the same way and just run some fresh hot glue on either end piece or if you really want to keep it in there you can run it right across you know and that'll stay solid and it ain't going to come out again but um, that's the basics on how to do that now as far as getting your speaker apart You're going to need a screwdriver that properly fits the screws. Take out your four screws.
probably should have done the speaker part first, but yeah, you you guys will get it. is everything's tightly put together in here so just pop your cover off and then just pop this way that's going to allow everything to come out now the first thing you're going to notice is your wires for your LED board they're soldered onto another board here this is why you want to unsolder them from here take those off and then that allows you free run of the board now this is a bad speaker anyways, it's green, so I'm going to show you how you pop this thing. So I'm going to take this one and just pop it that easy. Some of them are a little more stubborn, but this one came out easy. Okay, And it still leaves your motor and everything attached. But if you desolder the wires first, this is going to save you a lot of hassle. So when you put the board back in, you put it back in so the, connect the connectors are facing this way and then you can just reach up a wire solder reach up the other wire solder done and it's already glued in place so you don't have to worry about it flying back at your face while you're trying to solder it together so that's a pretty simple easy way straight board swap if you're not doing a board swap I would still desolder it anyways from the board and then it makes it easier to work on the board to get these out now if you have to take these out there's the next little bit of fun you may or may not need a solder sucker and in the event that you do well you're also going to need unless you got a buddy with you a set of these helping hands and i like to just clamp it in just like that and you start with the first bulb now you could do this without a solder sucker if you're if you're really good with it and you grip the bulb firmly, pinch it between your fingers, heat the two contacts at the same time as you're pulling down at it and pushing up on the board with your fingers at the same time. It's kind of a tricky maneuver, but you can do it. And then you can just lightly touch so you don't overheat the board because you don't want to do that. And you can pop the LED out, pop the LED out, and then switch the board around, pop the other ones out. Very simple, easy to do, okay? And as long as you didn't make a mess of your contacts, you won't need a solder sucker to clean up anything. But if you did, solder sucker, clean up the contacts. Okay? Put your new bulbs in. Boom, 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 boom. You already know the positive runs along this side where the wires attach. So these are all your positives. So with your bulbs, leave the legs on first. Do not cut these off until after they're installed. Okay, and this is where the soldering paste is going to come in handy too, because you're going to put these in to the socket, and then you're going to take a Q-tip with a bit of soldering paste and just put a little dab on each one so that the solder will um, bond to the metal instantaneously. If you don't do this, you'll overheat the LED legs, it's going to overheat the filament inside, and you're going to have a dead bulb. So be very careful and make sure that you use proper soldering paste and get them flush up to the board because you need them flush up the board for everything to fit in here properly, okay? And that's pretty much how you do it. You know, this is a, a, an explanatory thing more than anything, um, you know, and telling you step by step how to actually do it. Um, I'm not repairing this one right now just because I don't need to. Um, and I probably likely never will, but um, this board here is a good board. I know this is a good board. Um, and I've got a few more of these kicking around too. But um, it, it's really not that difficult to do this stuff. It just takes a couple of tools that you're going to need. You know, multimeter's handy, a 3.7 volt battery. You can even tie a couple of AA batteries together to make three point uh, three volts at least just so you can fire up the bulb okay um, so you're gonna need a, a battery some connecting wires on it so you can make sure that you pre-test your brand new bulbs okay um, 
you pre-test everything hooked up so you know which light bulbs seem to be the problem, you know, uh, or you can just opt out to change all four in each glass and then you're done and you won't have to do it again for a long time. Um, but you're going to need the solder sucker, you're going to need the helping hands, a uh, little machine here, these things are really cheap. Um, solder, proper soldering paste. I use this uh, master soldering paste, it's for electronics. The soldering wire I use is specific for electronics and it has lead in it. I don't like lead free solder, it's garbage. Um, you know, basics, you know, flat blade screwdriver, little jeweler screwdriver, take the speaker apart with. Okay, and you don't, you don't need a lot of expensive tools here. And you're gonna need the ultra bright clear glass LEDs. Now those you're probably if you got an electronic shop near you um, that specializes in electronics only, um, they would probably have these more than likely. And um, you know you're gonna need those colors that I just mentioned, which are um, read this the right way. You're gonna need red blue, green, and yellow. Those are going to be your three color, four colors. Red, blue, green, yellow, and they're three millimeter, okay, is what you need. Nothing bigger is going to fit. So, pretty simple, pretty easy to do. Uh, now, to reassemble your speaker once you got it all back together, now I'm not going to glue this thing back together because I don't need to right now anyway, but... Make sure that your front of your speaker faces like this. And it'll just push and click into place. Put your back cover back on. Like so. Hold it like this. And then just start putting your screws back in. Turn them until they stop, and then just a little bit of snugness. Don't reef on these because it is plastic, and you can strip or fracture the posts inside if you over torque these. So you only need to, to go until they stop and a little bit of snug. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So, I mean, if you have any other questions or comments, feel free to uh, leave them, and I'll do the best I can to answer your, your questions. And uh, we'll uh, see you on the next video.